Hey, Jesus Sanchez, everyone. Okay. Hi, hey, guys. Hey. Today I'm going to be talking about why do serial killers kill. Alright, so to start off with, I'm going to give you guys like a little bit of like background info on me, like in terms of my interest and you know, like childhood, to let you know, to let you guys know why I would choose a topic like serial killers. So as a kid, I've always been intrigued with the idea of public safety. Like growing up in a community filled with gang violence, I always wanted to like, guard people's well-being and like make the community feel safer in a way. And because of that, like, like living in the city of Chicago, like we experience violence on a daily basis. Some of us, most of us, sadly. And like seeing shootings on TV and stuff, like all this crime we see, sort of makes us like numb to the violence that plagues like in the streets of Chicago. And because of my passion for law enforcement and social justice, I decided to pick up on a topic like serial killers. <clears throat> there are many uh, uh, more. A lot of times, people think that insanity drove a person to kill multiple people. However, I think that there is something much more to that interpretation. There are many things that could be considered a crime. Murder, arson, kidnapping, money laundering, um, drug trafficking. However, uh, serial killers aren't people I see on the news very often. And for this reason, I'm like, I'm curious to know what drives a person to kill multiple people. So like up here, we have uh, very, uh, different serial killers ranging from cannibals to rapists to sociopaths. So what is a serial killer? The FBI, FBI.gov defines a serial killer as a person who has killed two or more people in two or more different occasions. So for my research project, I wanted to interview someone that had like first-hand experience with this type of stuff. So I went to my uncle, uh, Supervisor Inspector Grimaldo with the United States Marshal Service, and uh, I asked him five questions. So the first question I asked him was like, was there, were there any similarities in the traits that serial killers he's caught had? He said that more, more than likely all of them had like a sense of apathy, egocentric, and sociopathic tendencies, meaning that these people were oftentimes like antisocial, lacked enthusiasm or concern, and had little regard for the feelings of others. And for the similarities and motives, he said most times that we see like in media, we see like these genius like mastermind criminals that like go out and kill people, like are never caught by like law enforcement. But he said um, the motives are like most of these killings happen like during the heat of the moment. And it's not like what we see in media. Uh, signature killing of his or her victims. Um, he has never experienced any signature killings for the people he's caught, but his friend who has worked for the Chicago Police Department for 26 years has. His friend um, worked the case in which a man would like go out and like pick up prostitutes and kill them and take them to abandoned homes and like dump their bodies there. All of the prostitutes were shot to death. Um, how I see it is the media portraying serial killers. Like I said, media sort of glorifies them. They make them seem like they're really smart and like they're always like one step ahead of law enforcement officials. But in reality, serial killers are just like us. They're like normal people. They could be normal, smart, geniuses, whatever. They just vary. Uh, what drives individuals to kill multiple people? He said that a very big part of it is like the sense of apathy. And because of like that sense of apathy, they have like, I guess, no regard to like, um, it's like, they sort of don't like really care like how other people feel. And um, lack of sensitivity and sociopathic tendencies are really dangerous when cooped together. <coughs> and through this interview, I learned that in order for me to really know what drives a person to kill somebody, or the people I pick, is that I should be looking at their background. By background, I don't necessarily mean like their childhood or anything, but I mean like their hobbies, the people they talk to, the way they acted in their household, you know, things that set them apart from other people. So the first person is Keith Jesperson. He was wanted in the 1990s for the murder and rape of eight women. Oh, this is Melissa Moore, Keith Jesperson's daughter. So she recounts the like, she recounted an article telling about how her experience was living with Keith and her brother. So at a young age, Keith, for the, well, as a young, at a young age, Melissa Moore says that for the most part, Keith was a very loving father. Like there was nothing, I guess, weird about him at first. He was like very caring. They would go on family vacations like any normal family. But uh, there was a few things that he did that was like deem him questionable. Like for example, he was like very explicit about his sexual relationships with different women. Keith before his being divorced with his wife at the time. It was really weird. He would tell stories to his, to, uh, to his daughter and tell him about his sexual relationships. And uh, back in their farm in Washington State, uh, Melissa Moore and her brother would like find stray kittens to play with. And Keith would approach the two and take the kittens away from them and like kill the kittens in front of them and like oftentimes like skin them in front of both of the kids. Of course, like leaving them really traumatized. Alright, and these are uh, pictures of uh, Keith's victims. Like I said, they were all raped and shot to death. 
Um, because of Keith's fascination with sex, one could speculate that it was probably his sexual frustration and the loss of his wife that made him kill and rape all these women. And this is Jesse Palmer. The picture on the left is uh, him at the age of 14 after his capture. And the picture on the right uh, depicts him after his release from solitary confinement, after his, um, serving in prison. So Jesse Palmer is known to be the Ameri one of America's youngest serial killers at the age of 14. He would kill kids from like ranging from the age of one to like five. And because they were younger than him, it was easier for him to kill. Um, at a young age, Jesse was oftentimes bullied for his effect in his right eye. And uh, other than being bullied by his kids, like by uh, the kids in school, he was also abused by his father, oftentimes being stripped naked and beaten with a horse whip. And oh, these are the victims. And some say that because of Jesse's like uh, neg the neglect and abuse he, uh, I guess, suffered at a young age, uh, he had all this anger built up inside of him that eventually when he grew like, older, he released his anger by making people feel the same pain he felt as a kid. And this is H.H. Holmes. This is uh, considered to be one of America's first serial killers, but also one of the country's most sophisticated killers of all time. This guy was a genius. He graduated from the University of Michigan. He had his PhD. He's a pharmacist and, and a businessman. And this is his murder castle, situated in the Englewood neighborhood of Chicago. The castle is no longer up, but they like knocked it down into pathetics now. Um, <laughs> yeah, this guy was really smart. Um, he would, uh, during the World Fair in Chicago, he would like attract um, different people from Navy Pier and take them to this hotel. But back in the day, Englewood was like a really rich neighborhood, so like it was a bunch of rich people that like, came to the hotel. Um, he would have like gas, gas balls lined up in every room. So like at night when he, he, they would get locked into their room, he would like asphyxiate them with like poisonous gas and they would die. Um, the design of the hotel is really interesting. The hallways were like designed as a maze, so people that came in wouldn't really find a way to get out. Behind walls there were butcher tables and quick line beds to dispose of the victims. And this guy had like every step of down, like out how to kill them and how to dispose. Oh, wait. And though there's no clear motive as to why he killed people, he said that he was born with the very devil inside of him. And that the only reason, and that his sole purpose in life was to kill, kill, kill. Uh, this is Jeffrey Dahmer. And um, Jeffrey Dahmer killed approximately 17 males from the years 1978 to 1991. Elements such as cannibalism and dismemberment were involved in all of his murders. Um, at a young age, Jeffrey Dahmer was normal, I guess. He was very like, social and played around with kids, too. And, uh, but as he grew older, he found himself playing with like dead animals, and slowly, by, like slowly, he found himself being more antisocial. And this is a picture of his apartment. Um, growing up, Jeffrey uh, <coughs> Dahmer filled with his homo with homo his homosexual desires and sadistic fantasies. And because of this, he felt pushed to lure 19-year-old Stephen Hicks into his car and take him back to his apartment. After the two engaged in, in intercourse and had large amounts of alcohol. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer bashed Stephen Hicks in the head and eventually killed him. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer's explanation for this is that he didn't want Stephen Hicks to leave him. This would probably explain why Jeffrey Dahmer ate all of his victims as a way of saying you're never here to leave me. And this is Ted Bundy. Uh, described to be as a boy next door because of his good luck <coughs> and intelligence, he was able to lure any woman of his choice. He attended a in the University of Washington, he went out with a really, with a really pretty and rich girl. After the breakup between the two, he found himself being like really antisocial and depressed. And because of this, a lot of his victims resembled his ex-girlfriend's uh, physical appearance. And a lot of people say that he targeted a specific woman in order to gain vengeance for the breakup that happened in college. And another uh, serial killer situated here in Chicago is John Wayne Gacy, also known as a killer clown. He was charged in. In the 1980s, he was charged for the murder of 33 young men. Um, he said that all these murders were committed by an alternate personality, but there's like very there's like a huge debate between that claim, of whether it's true or not. Um, people say that hey, the same as Jeffrey Dahmer, he killed all his victims as a way of saying that they're never going to leave him. And um, most times. Like media, we often think of like uh, that these serial killers are like geniuses and stuff, and they're like, you know, that they're never gonna get caught or anything. But in reality, um, serial killers are more criminals of opportunity. You know, they're just like us, they're normal people. And for Jeffrey Dahmer, 
and John Wayne Gacy, they killed their victim as a way of saying, like, you guys are never going to leave me. Like, I guess they felt like they didn't like being detached from others. And for Jesse Pomeroy and Ted Bundy, all of their, their killings were done as a seek vengeance for their broken ties.